to Make It So HQ. My name is Fiona and I am going to do a little walkthrough today on my little Elna mini sewing machine. So I'm going to go and rejig the camera and then I'm going to talk you through this fabulous little sewing machine. Okay, so meet Mini Elna. Now, Mini Elna is 47 years old. I haven't had her for 47 years. I've had her for about six months. Um, and I just wanted to show you um, what I like about it, really. The first thing is the size. Now, it is tiny. I'm just gonna measure it for you. So this is, for visual reference, this is a standard piece of A4 paper. So it's basically the same width as an A4 bit of paper. So not including the, the handle. So it is 12 inches across. It is including these two bits, nine and a half inches high and say five inches wide so it is dinky so let me just show you now i don't know if you can see that from there but i made a little sewing machine mat for it so i made this little sewing machine mat and it's got mini elna embroidered on it um because i just felt she deserved her own little um, sewing machine mat and it's just the right size so the base the center is the same size as the bottom basically so to get into this basically it's got two clips on either side here and then there's another clip here you need to lift the handle up so if I just bring down the front and the back dun, dun, dun. And then if I just clip this side open, and then you can see that's what it looks like. And this is my sewing machine foot and pedal, and it's in the, a little scrap bag that I've made. So, and it all just fits in there perfectly so that you can then put it back in there when you fold it all up. So this is, I'm really pleased with this. It's not been made to match this, which is a little bit um, controversial because I do like everything matchy-matchy. This actually matches my normal sewing machine um, mat, so I need to make one to go with this one. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. So this is the Elna Lotus SP. This is the control, the foot control and the plug. And I'm just going to talk you through um, what's going on. So if I just bring this a little bit closer. We have got the thread goes on there. You wind the bobbin on here. And then this bit opens. And then this is where everything lives. So if you can have it, if I just tip this over like this should have thought this through but if you can see in here so this is the darning foot so you put that over the feet dogs and then you can darn we've got extra feet in here so we have got a clear foot i'll never get these back in again we've got a zipper foot that's the darning foot. And they just all have their own little slot, which I really like. Um, and this is the one I won't get back in. I don't think I'll get that back in again. Right, and then you've got your little um, screwdriver, the brush for cleaning out the lint. Seam ripper, there's meant to be oil goes in there, but I don't have the oil. This flicks out and that's your thread guide. There's a thread 
what you call them? Threader, machine threader. Pack your needles and then there's space for two bobbins. So that's basically all hidden nice and neatly in there. And then you just flick back the seam, um, the thread guide to, to shut it down, to shut the lid back down. And if I turn it around to this side, we've got the on off button here. You plug it in here. And then this is obvious, this is your hand wheel. And then we've got down here off stitches. And then we've got the bobbin winder here. And you need to, you just turn those to the one that you're looking for. If we move back round to the front, we have got we have got our tension, and these are the different stitches that it does, and this is the stitch length. And it's really interesting how this works because to reverse stitch, you actually turn the dial anti-clockwise to the dashes, and that's your reverse. Um, and then you've got the option of stitch lengths, half, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. Um, and then you just put it back to zero. And then this dial here gives you the option to do straight, sti straight stitch, zigzag stitch. And you can also do buttonholes on it. And you can also move the needle from left to right, which is quite unusual and such a small machine. And then you've also got here, this is your different zigzags. So um, that's to decide how big a zigzag you want, or it's a bit like a blind hem. You can't really see that from that, but I might be able to zoom in when I edit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in, thread it, and then we're going to see if we can have a little go. And then you can hear it going because it sounds amazing. So I'm going to plug it in, and then we're going to talk through threading it right i'm going to switch it on da, 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 and it's lit up and then i'm just going to talk you through the bobbin so the bobbin sits in the back here and you just slide that open and the bobbin is in here and then what i think is really cool about this i don't know if you can see that from there that's the bobbin and then there's a bobbin remover finger i will call it and it's literally you pull it down from the back of the machine and it's on a spring and you stick it in to the hole in the bobbin and it pulls it up so i'm going to see if i can get closer to show you that right i don't know if this is going to work or not but so that's the bobbin at the back i'm tilting this on its side um and then maybe if I switch, hang on, let's switch it off because I think the lights possibly not helping. Right. So and then behind here, there's this little. Can you see? It's on a spring, and then you put that in the hole of the bobbin, and then it pulls the bobbin out. It is so clever. Right, I'm going to re-jig re the camera and then we'll just talk through what how to thread right, it. Right, so I'm going to just talk you through how to thread the Elna Lotus. So I'm switching it back on. Now, the other interesting thing to note about this sewing machine is, although it is literally the size of an A4 piece of paper, it is actually all full-size parts on the machine. So, and it sews really nicely. So I'm just going to put the bobbin back in. And the bobbins are actually metal and it's all metal on the bottom and it's got holes in it on the top. So there's only one way you can put it in. So you put the all metal bit down and you can see the holes on the top. And then I'm going to thread it with this green thread. So we need to lift the lid back open and flick out the guide for the thread. Then we pass the thread round. So I'll just do that again. The thread goes 
round the thread guys and make sure it doesn't catch on this little lip so just make sure that it's taut here then you go down and round the tension disc and at this point I to hold the thread so that it can't then keep unraveling and you can feel now that that's clicked in place because the thread won't just unwind it's stuck there now so now we're going to go up and down the lever so if i go up and down and then you make sure that it goes round the little hook you're going to come down the front and then you're going to go in this guide here then there's another guide just at the bottom of the metal and this is a tricky one to get in it's really tight so you need to really hold the thread as you do it or it just unwinds and then you go round the back of the the guide that's just above the needle and then we're going to thread the needle and literally this that's probably the only thing that this doesn't have is a needle threader and i'm just going to put my foot down so that i can see what i'm doing and i don't think from this angle i can't actually see the eye of the needle so i might have to readjust and try it once more Right, I'm going to just readjust the machine and thread the needle and then I'll come back to you. Right, I've managed to thread the needle. So now what I want to do is I want to bring up the bobbin thread. So I'm just going to turn the wheel towards me. And now that's not worked because it's still on off mode. So I need to turn it to stitch mode and then the wheel will continue to go round so it's like a safety feature it won't work whilst it's in off mode right right so we're going to bring up the bobbin thread like so and then we put both of those to the back we're on sewing mode I'm going to change my stitch length to two and a half zero means that I'm in the center and then let's just sew and then you can hear the noise of the sewing machine got my piece of fabric the pedal lever is directly behind the, the needle and you just push that down and then we're going to do a couple of stitches how nice does that sound okay so i'm going to just put the needle down I'm going to lift it up and then turn it round and then we're going to go back the way we came but this time I'm going to just show you how to reverse so you go forward and then this is the reverse button so you're basically going to turn it to the dotted lines so I'm going to go for the middle dotted line and it will now go backwards and it sounds just as smooth when it goes backwards as it does forwards and then if I put my foot down completely, it actually goes quite fast. I'm just trying to find the foot pedal. And then I'm just going to lift the foot, pull it out and then cut it. And the stitches and the stitches are really nice as well 
So that's the back stitches and they're really tidy looking. The front you can't see very well because it's too similar to the fabric that I used, um, but it looks really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to show you how to wind it. So I'm just going to set it up to wind and then I'll show you how to do that. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind the bobbin. So I'm going to take the thread, let's take the thread off. And we're just going to we're just going to add it on to an existing bobbin. I don't have loads of these bobbins, so normally when I'm sewing, I tend to just um, have a bobbin with each colour that I've got on it. So I can't do that with these because I don't have enough. So we're just going to use an existing one. Um, so that goes on there till it clicks and it's quite a force required that goes on there then you're going to wind this round the seam guide and your loose end of the th thread goes through one of these holes from the inside out like so and then you need to turn this knob here to the bobbin icon okay and then i'm just going to hold the thread until it starts going and then i can let go of this thread once it's tight and that is it boom and that's how easy it is to thread the bobbin on the elna lotus so I am really, I really love this machine. It sounds really nice. The stitches are really good. There's really nothing I don't like about it. And I would definitely recommend one. If you see one of these come up, I would suggest, depending on the price, treat yourself to one. But I would get it serviced before you use it because they're old machines and they probably if it's been if you're buying it second hand off of um the previous owner it wouldn't hurt to get it serviced to make sure that it is going to sew as well as you would like it to so thanks for watching my little run through video on how to set up the elna lotus as i say this machine is 47 years old I've not had it for 47 years. Um, however, I love it and it's just a really um, solid machine. Dinky, but full size at the same time, which is just like mind boggling that they've got all the full size stuff into such a small um, machine. And as you've seen from before, the stitches are so nice. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend this machine and I would just, as I said before, um, if you can, if you manage to get your hands on one from its original previous owner, go and get somebody who knows what they're doing to service it for you before you use it. And then you'll be guaranteed to have success with it. But I have really enjoyed my um, Elna sewing machine and I hope that you enjoy yours too. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Thank you.